the No Fate channel, checking in. And I am giving you five tips on how to prevent injuries during an obstacle course race. So if you have a Tough Mudder, a Spartan race, a mud run, a bone frog race coming up, any type of obstacle course, you're gonna wanna stay tuned. I have taken part in a number of obstacle course races and I've been extremely fortunate to not only finish all of them, but to get through them essentially unscathed. I've seen this year that there have been a number of injuries on the courses uh, from Tough Mudder to Spartan, Bone Frog. Um, in fact, even Damer from the OCR Kings, a great YouTube channel, I'll link them up here. He had his hamstring torn um, so he's done for the season. So obviously obstacle course races are prone for injury. There's tons of places to get hurt. And I thought it would be a good idea to give you my five top tips on how to prevent injuries or at the very least reduce the risk as much as possible. The biggest tip that I can give you, number one on the list, is to train properly. So many people sign up for these obstacle course races. They think they're going to do so much training, and it never gets done. I've talked to people on the front line to see, like, say, how much running they've done. And they're in an eight-mile race, and they've never even jogged five miles. During your training, you really want to try to mimic the obstacles that you're going to experience on the course. So if you know you're going to have a rope climb or a, a tire flip, you really want to try to get access to those things. Oftentimes, I know local gyms just don't have heavy tires or hanging ropes lying around for you to practice that but i would argue that if you can't get access to specific obstacle items such as the rope climb such as uh, a tire flip that you should try to mimic those movements during training right so if you can't get a tire do deficit deadlifts or even deficit hex bar deadlifts in order to get that motion where you're going to have to get low and drive that weight up very similar to a rope climb, do a lots of pull-ups. Do pull-ups with um, a rope pull-down um, to, again, mimic that motion of pulling yourself up using that rope. Another mistake that people often make with regards to not training properly is that they don't train with fatigue in mind, okay? So oftentimes they'll go to the gym and they'll work out for 60 to 90 minutes, but you're competing in a race that might take you three hours or even four hours. Some people it takes six hours. You really want to practice that fatigue training, okay? It's very easy to do a rope climb when your hands are dry and your muscles are warmed up and you're feeling good, okay? It's a lot harder to do a rope climb when your hands are wet and muddy, you're exhausted, you've already cleared five or six miles miles and 20 plus obstacles and now you've got a slippery rope to climb up so you really want to practice training fatigued so that you know how your body is going to react once it gets tired because obviously once we get tired we're not nearly as strong we're not nearly as stable and it, by practicing that you know how your body is going to react on the course the day of the race and hopefully it will prepare your body to handle a lot of the extra workload you expect to put it under during that during that race day. The second tip that I can give you, and this is counterintuitive to the first tip, is not to overtrain. Now, I often have this problem with respect to my obstacle course races. I get so excited, I'm so pumped up, and I know those obstacle course races are so tough that I put myself through so much stress. I try to really hammer down on all of the obstacles, and there's so much training that I want to get done, and frankly, my body gets beaten up. It doesn't get enough, enough rest. It doesn't get enough recovery, so the day of the race, I'm actually fairly fatigued. I actually come into the race with either minor injuries or um, I'm just, just worn out and tired, and a lot of people will sign up for a race, and they train so, so hard, and they end up getting injured during training that they never even make it to the race starting line, so you really want to find that balance of training hard, but not overtraining, making sure that you're getting enough recovery, making sure that you're getting enough rest, and certainly make sure that you're listening to your body. Number three, one that people often overlook very much so, and that is proper clothing. I know that the, the racers on the podium often have, you know, short shorts and no shirt, and they just go, okay, but that's not you. And even though when we're talking about injuries, you often think of like, a torn muscle or a broken ankle but the reality is the majority of the injuries on the obstacle course race are going to come from scratches they're going to come from poison ivy they're going to come from scrapes and road rash you need to make sure you're having the proper clothing and that starts with footwear okay oftentimes people think of a mud run they think they get to get an old pair of shoes that they're going to throw out at the end of the race because they're going to get muddy and while i wouldn't argue with that logic the reality is it's going to make for a much longer race and a much poor experience you want to get um, a mud shoe okay so they actually sell a number of shoes that are specific for obstacle course races that have really good grip they're essentially like cleats with a softer sole okay so it's going to help you get better grip on the course better grip on the obstacles and it's going to help clear the mud off because these are actually designed to not hold in the water and the mud um, during the race now uh, this is a Reebok pair you can there's a ton of them out there I'm not going to go into which one's best or which one's worse um, but certainly invest in the money 
and a pair of obstacle course race shoes, especially if you're gonna do more than one, you're gonna find it's super beneficial on the course. They will last you a number, a number of races. And I'm telling you, this is probably the number one thing you can do to not only help prevent injuries and help improve your time, as well as, and most importantly, um, just have a better experience on the course because when you've got crappy shoes on that have no soles, no grip, and you're sliding all over the place, it's gonna take uh, a tough experience and turn it much, much worse. Now, with respect to, um, skin cuts, skin nicks, cuts, scrapes. Those are very, very common, okay, in obstacle course races. You're going through woods, you're going over rocks, you're getting cuts and you don't realize it till the end of the race and you're cut up. Also, one of the big factors in a lot of these obstacle course races is poison ivy. People finish the race, they finish fine, they feel great, and the next day they have to go to the doctors because they got poison ivy from their ankles all the way up to their neck. So during the race, I normally wear shorts and a t-shirt, but in order to cover some more exposed skin and prevent, again, those nicks and scrapes, and more importantly, poison ivy, um, is essentially calf sleeves. These go basically from your ankle almost all the way up to your knee, and these are arm sleeves. Same idea. They go from your wrist all the way up over your bicep, and it gives you a lot more coverage. It also gives you some sun protection. The fourth thing that you can do to minimize the reduce of risk of injury is simply to go slow. Now, I know it's a race. You want to go super fast. When that gun goes off, you want to sprint the whole thing. And the reality is, if you're not expecting to be on the podium or the top 10 finisher, you don't need to go fast. You want to go out and have a good time. And most people will, will sprint when it's unnecessary. If you are in the backwoods, if you're on a narrow path, you're running down a, a super narrow, steep slope with mud and rocks and random sticks and stones sticking out, you should not be sprinting that area. And the reason I argue with that is that if you sprint that area, you're much higher risk of injury, of slipping, falling, hurting yourself, and you're not gonna be actually saving more time or much more time than if you just walked or even lightly jogged that area. You really wanna be smart. Again, you're going through these woods, wooded sections, you're going through this course where you don't even know the layout. You've never had this run before. So you don't know the twists and turns and which parts are slippery. Um, also, you know, we see some of these areas that have mud pits and so many people will run into the mud pit, pit full, full, full steam. They don't know the depth, okay? And a lot of times they think it's super deep and it's not, or they think it's shallow and it's super deep. And again, they're running full steam into this mud pit and boom, they're hurting themselves. Doing some of these obstacles at full sprint, full speed is, is not going to save you much more time and it is going to jack up your risk of injury. You really need to be smart about when you go fast and when you go slow. I know with like walls, with like those Berlin walls on some of these courses, people get to the top and they just jump over and they just think that, you know, they don't even think about how they're gonna land, okay? So they, it seems like a good idea from the top to just jump down. And the reality is a lot of people will hurt themselves when they land, they're not landing correctly because they're going so fast that their body's taking much, much more of an impact. On these walls, you're not gonna save much time by just jumping over them. You, you know, people think they're gonna hit the ground running and the reality is you hit the ground and it's gonna take the wind out if you don't hit it right. So oftentimes with these walls, what I'll do after I get to the top is I simply do a dead hang and then lightly drop to the ground. That reduces the amount of actual distance I need to drop to the ground and it prevents a lot more impact on my knees, on my ankles, and prevents the risk of simply snapping an ankle. I know it's a race and you want to get a good finishing time, but keep in mind, if you go slow at some of the riskier sections, there's going to be plenty of easy sections, wide open areas where you can pick up the pace. You can sprint on open, flat grassland that you know has no risk whatsoever. All right, so really pick your spots to go fast and be smart about the sections that you're going slow. And the fifth and final tip that I can give you is to stretch. And I know that seems like the dumbest tip ever. And the reality is I see it in the gym and I see it even more so on the race course is that people aren't stretching enough. They get to the gym and they just start hitting those weights. And that's not a good idea. You really wanna make sure you're stretching, warming up those joints, those ligaments, the tendons, everything. And the reality is you gotta be even more so warming up, stretching the day of the race. And what happens during the day of the race, you're super excited. You get to the venue late, you've got to check in, you've got to check your bag, you've got to take all those selfies, you've got to, uh, to meet up with your friends, get to the starting line, and what happens is people are stretching even less the day of the race, okay? You want to be stretching twice as much, three times as much the day of the race. You want to really get that deep stretch. You want to stretch from ankle up to your neck and then do it again. Repeat all of those stretches to, again, loosen up those muscles and tendons and ligaments to, and best prepare them to handle all of the impact, the strain and the stress of the courses, of the running, of the day. Trust me, so many people think that they're stretching. They're, they, they, don't, we, they don't even start stretching until they're in the queue to, to run and they start you know, bending over to touch their toes. 
I hope you found these five injury prevention tips informative, and I hope it's gonna help you finish your next obstacle course race without having any injuries and having the best time possible. If you came this far in the video, then definitely give it a like, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. If you are looking to help out this channel, then definitely use that Amazon link in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything, it takes a little money away from Amazon, they're not gonna miss it. And it gives me a little bit of extra money in order to help produce some of these videos. As usual, thanks for watching and don't save anything for the trip back. I am dedicated to helping you dads be great parents to your children and still accomplish your own personal goals. I post tips and tricks to save you dads time, energy, and money. Three things that are in short supply for every dad out there.